Tony Ferrier, it is me, Scotty McClure, and we are, of course, live on the big one. Excellent stuff. A bit close to you tonight, so I shall move away a little bit. There we go. Welcome, 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 I say, to our fantastic show tonight. This is the big one. One hour of superb scintillating information, education, and entertainment for not just one nation, of course, but for all nations. If you've just joined us, a very warm welcome. You're watching Scotty McClue, and we're live on Facebook Live. That is the big one. We're only with you for one hour, the one hour of superb scintillating information, education, and entertainment for the whole world. The world's only global talk show with me, Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster, and the first lord of the internet. There you are, dinky do, Scotty. Hope you're well says Stephen. Welcome Stephen, lovely to have you with us of course, tremendous, we're all together Sunday night, nothing gets past me, and nine o'clock sharp, I was here at nine o'clock sharp, where are you? Uh, hovercraft Scotty, tell me about it, says Jonathan Welch, yes indeed, the hovercrafts, you'll see on the hovercrafts a number that says SR, and SR stands for Saunders Row, and Saunders had a wonderful, wonderful history. Started with Sam Saunders, a launch builder from Stretley on Thames in the 1890s. And uh, then he moved, of course, to uh, the Isle of Wight. And uh, they became Saunders Row Saro. And they built wooden aircraft. They built seaplanes. And right on to a tremendous plane called the Princess, which the government scrapped in the early 1950s, the Saro Princess, and the hovercraft, which I think are a fabulous, fabulous invention. They are being broken up now. It's tragic. Charles McLaughlin is watching Dinky Doo. Good evening, Scotty. What about this Russia business? What's your tick on it? Well, I always say in these things, time will tell. And I think we've got to sit back and have a right good look at it. The trick is not to go believing all sources, or in fact, even sources work out yourself what you think may have happened by reading everything and watching everything so there you are uh, starting your live link on true radio enjoy all says henry newton dinky do henry thank you very much for that scotty McClure, of course absolutely massive you'll see that thousands saw us last week and of course yesterday if you scroll down you'll see my st patrick's day message paddy's day message to the world because we are all from Ireland, and they had a couple of bile ducts on, trying to uh, trying to skew it round. And of course, you can't skew it round. They were talking about stuff that's happened since 1922. There we are. And um, of course, what did we have there? We had <laughs> St. Patrick going back to 450 AD. All right, have you got that? There we are. Long before we're the north and the south. Hootsman says, "Turn the air, dinky do." Uh, so there we are. You've all got your ideas. I'm not going to read these out, guys, but you've all got your ideas. Kieran Fox, thank you, do. Lovely to have you with us, and we'll be talking about that. St. Patrick's Day, did you do anything interesting for St. Patrick's Day, and do you realise that St. Patrick's Day is for everyone? We're all actually Africans via Ireland. So there you are, wonderful stuff. Um, what colour is the St. Patrick's flag? says Ryan Doherty. The St. Patrick's flag is white with a red diagonal cross, Ryan. That's the actual St. Patrick's flag. Hola, Scotty. Kieran, check it in. Kieran Fox, dinky do. Lovely to have you with us, of course. You're watching the Scotty McClue Show. We are live worldwide. We are, of course, dependent on the algorithm, depending on who's allowed to see us. But we should be going out to 1.8 billion people eventually so there you are scotty see you share your link for the new radio station starting up in glasgow are you involved do you have a show says stephen well nothing as yet stephen but who knows what the future might bring there's a lot of exciting things happening in radio in scotland a lot of new stations starting up so uh, you know i'm talking to different people and um, we're having some great chats, very, very senior people, so we shall see what happens. But it would be nice to have the radio phone in back with all the equipment there. Oh, good. I thought you were going to say the trickler, says Ryan Doherty. No, that was a much later thing. The trickler is a Johnny-come-lately flag, the peace between the orange and the green. So there you are from the Irish 
free state. But no, the St. Patrick's flag is uh, very ancient, and it is the uh, diagonal red cross on a white background. Hello from four Scots in Antigua. There, have I said it right? Antigua. It's marvellous. Out in the West Indies. If you go to a place called Greenock that uh, used to be famous for sugar refining and shipping, and they ran fast sugar runners back and forward to the West Indies, and you've got Antigua Street and uh, Tobago Street and all that Jamaica Street. Fantastic in Greenock. Why is the St. Patrick flag still on the Union flag, says Eddie Doby. Well, it's very interesting, but the Union flag, of course, made up of four countries. You see, there's no such country as Britain, so you can't actually be British unless you're saying you're from that land mass. So you're either Scottish, English, Irish, or Welsh. And, of course, this guy had said, before we all become Irish for the day, we're all Irish for life because Ireland is referred to as the old country. So there you are. We were all from. And he was talking about St. Patrick being buried in Ulster. But Ulster, of course, covers nine counties, three of them in the south and three of them in the north, but all of them in Ireland. So there you are. Very, very important. Uh, Scotty, do you think the diplomatic bag might be involved in the Russia-English New Cold War? Uh, who's in control of the bag, says Kieran. Kieran, it's not really for me to comment on these things, to be quite honest. But it seems to be a very quick sort of acceleration. I think that what you've got, somebody was saying yesterday that to be a diplomat, you really, really, really have to know your stuff. And the problem that we've got in modern day politics, no names, no pack drill, is a lot of people who are relatively inexperienced. You see it all the time, people having to apologize for things that they've said because they didn't realize what the rules were. And you need to know what the rules are. But you see, they're appointed, they're young people in a hurry, and they've been appointed in haste because um, there's a shortage of gifted and talented people. I'm not saying they're not gifted and talented, but you need vast, vast experience, and you can't buy that. It comes from life. So there you are. And uh, what have we got? Exactly, I don't believe there's such a thing as British unless it's England. It's England people are always talking about. They're always talking about the Queen of England, but in actual fact, the winner for the Scots would be to adopt a royal family to make sure that the crown is still unionized from 1603 and then the Scots can happily go for independence. Not a problem. So there we are. James Cotter's Dinky Doo. Where did you get your bonnet, Scotty? Um, I want one to keep my napper warm in the cold, says Alistair King. There are stacks of them about. They're very, very fashionable. Scotty McClue has continued the bonnet. If you look, there's a Scottish program called Still Game, and that came in after. Scotty McClure appeared with his bonnet. Very, very interesting. Uh, hello from Queensland, Australia, says Julie Casey. Julie, it's lovely to hear from you, and you will have warmth. We've got freezing cold at the moment in the land mass of Britain. Well answered, and thank you, says Kieran Fox. Not at all, Kieran. You couldn't have trust you to sit the right way around in the toilet pan seat, says Graham Kennedy. Graham, are you using my own language there? I wouldn't trust you to sit the right way round on the levee. Fantastic. He's still in the pie business, Scotty McClue's Pies. Wonderful, one of the most successful companies in the world. So there you are. Always say aye to a McClue's Pie. Uh, what are you on, Scotty? Says William Fox. We're on Facebook, William. Facebook Live, so you should be seeing us there. Fantastic stuff. Scotty, the monarchy are so out of date, austerity is paying for the £25 million wedding. You can't make it up. Ian Walker, you obviously have very, very little understanding of how this country works, right? These are separate budgets. The monarchy costs us 52 pence a year and certainly under 60 pence a year. An absolute bargain and absolutely well into date because every country in the world wishes they had the same setup as us. It's all we've actually got left of our major assets is the curator of the crown. That's the monarchy for you. Fantastic stuff. It's, it's uh, symbolic. America has got the flag. You'll see Americans saluting the flag, standing up for the flag. We've got 
the crown. Tremendous. So there we are. Ben Fosakhali. Uh, go say hi to the wife Tracy, says James Adamson. Of course I am. Hello, says Daniel Roberts. Hello, Daniel Dinky Do. And uh, what have you. So there you go, Ian Walker. So I hope that sent you a war with a flea in your ear, as we say. Well said, 52 pence, well spent, says Graham Kennedy. You're absolutely right, Graham. The monarchy is an absolute bargain. It's a sideshow to the whole independence thing. Don't get caught up in it. That would be the trap. Just say yes, 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 yes to the crown and to the monarchy, and you'll be absolutely fine. And then Scotland can have its independence, because that's the only stumbling block, is the concern, what would happen if the crown was split? Not going to be split. All right. Uh, is there a Mrs. McClure, and what does she do between 9 and 10 on a Sunday? Says Jonathan Welch. Well, Jonathan, I don't like to pry. So there you are. Brian Kessick's watching Dinky Doo. Callum Swain, lovely to have you with us. Tremendous figures for the Scotty McClure show, guys. Share and share and share and share and share. We have four share points. We have one at 9.15, one at 9.30, one at 9.45, and one at 10 o'clock sharp. So if every single one of you can share and let everybody know that Scotty McClue is live at 9 o'clock. We are, of course, dependent on the algorithm, the bot, to uh, see how many people we get exposed to. But we should actually be going out to 1.8 billion people. That would be superb. Scotty, should radio be taught in schools as a means of teaching proper language skills and building confidence in youngsters? Yes, Alan, it should be. I mean, I noticed yesterday a young person going live on the internet and saying, we've just went live. And I thought, if you've just went live, then you shouldn't really be broadcasting. There you are. You've just gone live. Language skills, very, very important. Communication. Why would you want to pay 52 pay to a strange family who've got millions? You're so ill-informed and brainwashed, Scotty. See the light. Ian Walker. There's nobody more of an expert on the monarchy than Scotty McClue. You're the one who's brainwashed. 52P, you should know them. They've been around since long before you were born. They've been around for thousands of years. So it's your business to get to know the royal family and get to love them the same as the rest of us, regardless of race, creed, age, colour, stage, politics, anything like that. They surmount the whole lot. They are absolutely up there the symbol of the crown so there we are and it's not easy for the queen i should tell you that stephen say you're needing to cut down in the cream bun sir you're needing to cut down in extraneous chat sir i shall tell you that lol you're off your nuts is in walker no not at all ian i'm just educating you whether you choose to understand or not is up to you, but I would like to try and wipe out your ignorance and be of some help. I'm only giving you the facts. I don't have a view one way or the other. Right, so there you go. Why can't we vote every five years for the monarchy? That would be democracy, not forced on us. Alfred James Wright, you have nothing forced on you. You have a gift of a curator for the crown, which is the symbol of our nations, Scotland, England, Ireland, and Wales. Yes, there you are. And uh, Ireland is very, very important, as I said yesterday in my St. Patrick's Day message, which you can see if you scroll down. You'll see me wearing my Irish hat. Wonderful stuff. And uh, the Republic of Scotland, says James Adamson. James, if you pursue that route, then it will never happen. That's you pipe dreaming. But if you take the monarchy with you, there's no reason why Scotland should not be an independent country. We're splitting the parliaments, not the crowns. Perhaps I should be put in charge of the whole thing myself so I can explain to the nation on the telly every night on the new news at six. There you are, Scotty McClue, telling you what it's like to be dinky-doo. Uh, Daniel Watts, Dinky Doo, Wolfpack Hunters looking for you, says William Fox. The Wolfpacks, the Second World War, they got my Uncle Colin aboard HMS Harvester. You'll see that he lost his life at the age of 21, 75 years ago last Sunday. Uh, very interesting, last Sunday afternoon. What about this Putin geezer? Should we be afraid, Scotty? Well, we don't know if he's done anything to be afraid of. I'm just going to read a sip of tea. Oh, that's lovely. Mark Jippet there, Scotty for First Minister. Wonderful. No, no, no. Nicholas doing a wonderful, wonderful job. 
Shouldn't more be spent on our schools and NHS than subsidising the politicians in Parliament? Been a lot of talk on this lately. What's your view on it, Scotty? Says Alistair King. You can never spend too much on education, I say, and a lot of the budget should be towards education because that's going to be the next generation of curators of the world and they should know what they are doing. There's a very important public school and its job is to train world leaders because after the First World War, they realised that the world leaders were very poorly educated. So this wonderful school trains a lot of up and coming world leaders. Tremendous stuff. And I think we should be doing that. Uh, away and stick your um, RS out the window and throw stones at it, says Graham Kennedy. Who are you talking to, Graham? It's certainly not me. So there we are. Uh, excellent stuff. Hope you're well, dinky-doo, Ian Walker. You can't actually say that even as a joke. So what we'll do is we'll delete your comment and hopefully you'll not be making it again. Uh, so there we are. I've no issue with the monarchy, Scotty, for the direct trials, shall we say, but the hangers-on don't need to be there. Stephen Weymouth, the whole issue is 52 pence. So whether it's the direct trials or the hangers-on, it doesn't make any difference. And they're not hangers-on. They're actually descended from all the royalties. So the extra ones as the family goes out, they are descendants of the king. Absolutely. So there we are. There are royal dukes, and uh, they're the same grandfather as the queen. Um, hello, Scott, are you a legend, says Callum Slight. Dinky do, Callum, lovely to have you with us, of course. Gary Porter, excellent stuff. Uh, ben Fasakali, I'm not so keen on the royal family tradition that served in its time, day and age, especially when people go hungry and live in the streets. There's loads of room in palaces. Ben, again, this is well-meaning, but it's quite ignorant. And I don't use that word as an insult, because you're a bright man, Ben Fasakali. I can tell you that for nothing. But I don't mean it as any insult, but the palaces are highly unsuited. Um, as um, accommodation for homeless people. Homeless people would need somewhere to wash, they would need proper toilets and all the rest of it. Now, I don't know how much you know about palaces, but the rooms are huge, they are drafty, they are uncomfortable. I would not thank you for a life in a palace. If somebody invited me to stay in the palace, I think I would shudder a little bit. You know, there's a, a story of an aristocrat going to a great big country house and the butler was fighting him for his case. I will take your case, sir. No, 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 it's all right, I've got it. No, sir, let me, if you will allow me, sir. And the butler pulled the case, it fell open and there was coal to light a clandestine fire in the bedroom because of how cold they are. So the homeless are not going to be any warmer inside a palace, highly unsuited, and it is, of course, a national asset. Also, these things come out of different budgets, but we need a budget for the homeless and a budget for feeding the children. I noticed that they stole, the politicians stole the school meals away from our little ones, the free school meals. Shocking, shocking, shocking. Uh, hello, Scotty, how are you doing? Says Thomas Hamilton, dinky do. And uh, Sapnin, says Joseph, excellent stuff. Um, Rolls are public servants. They're employed by the public. 52p is an absolute bargain, says Alistair King. You are quite right, Alistair King. The monarchy is a bargain, a wonderful thing, and something not to be knocked. Excellent stuff. Um, you would say that if your second name is Mr. King. How was your day, says Thomas Hamilton? My day was absolutely fabulous. Very, very cold, though, I have to say. A very cold day for the middle of March. If you've just joined us, folks, a very warm welcome. You're watching Scotty McClue. We are, of course, live on Facebook Live. That's the big one, the one everyone's watching, the one everyone's talking about. This is the new television, right? It will happen very, very quickly. Once all the little um, rough edges get smoothed out on the internet, you will see that this is the new television. You're watching Scotty McClue, but uh, also I think Scotty McClue should be going out on national television at night so we can all get our points of view across. Uh, that's good, Scotty, says Thomas. Absolutely. Neil O'Gormley, Dinky Do, lovely to have you with us. Shug Plunkett, how are you? And Mark Waddell. Come and join us, guys. You're very, very welcome. You're watching Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster, the first lord of the internet, broadcasting live on Facebook Live right across the world. The time is well past our share time. Can we all share, 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 share right now? 
Uh, so, Scotty, it would be appear if you bang two halves of a horse together. It doesn't sound like a coconut, says Stephen. Yes, I think that would appear absolutely right. And I wouldn't like to bang two halves of a horse together because it would frighten the horse. They are you better frightening uh, the coconut because remember, if you're banging two coconuts together, clip clop, clippity clop, then uh, what you've got there is empty coconut shells. What time are you on, answers Thomas? We're on now. We're live now, Thomas, to the world from 9 o'clock sharp through until 10 o'clock sharp. Excellent stuff. We used to be on at 10 o'clock sharp, but it was a bit late for people who had to get off for a Monday morning. So there you are. Uh, there's a private scheme in Liverpool for homeless, although I'd prefer councillors reduced their budget and contributed their expenses to good causes. Kieran, it doesn't necessarily work like that. Now, I know it's a little bit galling when you hear that somebody's earning a lot more than you or I. But at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. They're taking that responsibility for that job. So when you're paying politicians, they're taking a huge responsibility, a massive responsibility for things. So I don't really mind. The Queen is doing a fantastic job as a curator of the crown and has done a fantastic job since 1952. So there you are. Amazing, amazing. Good old Ken Dodd joke. Bless him. Do you know, I watched a bit of Ken yesterday. I was very, very privileged to have met Ken and had a long, long chat to him. We didn't muck about or clown about. We talked seriously like this about putting jokes together. How do you put a joke together? And um, all the stuff that had kept him going so long. Tremendous stuff. That was 20 years ago I met him, so he'd be 70. And he was delightful. He was absolutely lovely. And he said to me, and who are you? And I said, I don't think you'll have heard of me, Ken. I'm Scotty McClue from the radio. And he said, yes, I have. So they are, because Ken Dodd was a director of Radio City in Liverpool, a fabulous, fabulous radio station. And uh, we had a lovely chat and we shook hands and had a wonderful, wonderful chat. It was very, very enlightening and it was very, very interesting. And what a lovely, lovely guy to talk to. Just quite gentle, quite relaxed. Oh, yes. <laughs> and that sort of thing. And of course, I absolutely adored the man personally and professionally. So there you are. But I was watching him yesterday and um, I really could not stop shaking with laughter. And it's tremendous that I was just on my own looking at a bit of Ken Dodd. Watch him, the one when he comes on at the Raw Variety Dinners. Uh, Raw Variety Performance. Sorry, stealing school dinners from the Waynes is disgusting, Scotty. So there we are. The Tories and the DUP have no shame. Says Gary Cross, and well, they don't appear to have Gary, I can tell you that. I mean, for goodness sake, what kind of government expects to attract votes by taking away the children's food? Right, so there we go. Nice wee hook there with the Queen and stuff. Almost had me typing a wee rant. LMAO, Davy O'Donnell. Davy O'Donnell, you type a wee rant. I shall read it out. We don't mind. Uh, I remember you from Scott FM. We used to bam you up every night. You crabbing old. Uh, says Stephen James Henderson. Did you indeed? Scotty, do people release how much the royals do for the UK? Or do people realise? No, I don't think they do, Neil. I don't think they quite realise just the work that goes in. That Her Majesty the Queen, even at the age of 92, gets wakened at 5 o'clock in the morning. Good morning, ma'am. Cup of tea for you? Oh, yes. Where are we going today? Oh, Manchester. Lovely. Uh, and that sort of stuff. And off she goes, Prince Philip has decided to retire from public life at the age of 96. So there we are. But he's really just throttling back. I don't think he has retired as such. I think we'll be seeing him again. He stood down as the Captain General of the Royal Marines. And it was stunning to watch him on parade at 96 with his Macintosh and his bowler hat chattering away to the commanding officers of the Royal Marines. The commanding officer, I should say, of the Royal Marines. Uh, Gordon Sterling watching. Dinky do. Gordon Stirling, did you see my post on the hovercraft? Very, very important, very interesting. There's the phone there, so we'll just uh, hold on two seconds. I'll just have to tell them. And uh, just broadcasting at the moment, thank you. Excellent stuff. Uh, Marvellous. There we are, busy, busy place, this. Right, um, hi from Italy, says Anna Gabrielli. Isn't that lovely? 
Anna Gabrielli in Italy. Ken Dodge was a legend. I've seen him a few times. <coughs> Watch him at the Royal Variety performance. I don't think I'll crack the joke that cracked me up. But it was just absolutely fabulous. So there we are. Um, well, I will. I'll, I'll tell you this one. Right. It's one of his. And you'll see it there. And I acknowledge that. But is that um Yes, there we are. You can see them all standing in front of each other at the Battle of Hastings. Harold with an arrow stuck in his eye and his friend shouting to him, keep blinking, it'll work its way out. <laughs> uh, so there we are. Uh, get the phone, Scotty. It might be your kira. Don't be silly, Ian, and don't be so cheeky. Uh, well, we don't all lead the same life as yourself. I watched another audience with Ken on Monday, Scotty. Very funny. I used to have little seaside holidays with my grandparents. I've seen all the old variety acts. It's like watching my youth disappearing. I can remember Stephen Weirmouth. I was um, down in Sheffield, and I had an afternoon off, and I thought, what shall I do? So I drove all the way down to, um, well, when I say an afternoon off, it was a morning and an afternoon. And I drove all the way down to Cambridge. And then I also drove out to um, oh, the lovely holiday resort, the nearest holiday resort in Lincolnshire to Sheffield. It's miles away, of course. And uh, I drove out there and the Ken Dodd show was on. The summer show was on. Fantastic stuff. So there you are. It was so funny. Uh, David McMillan, Dinky Doo, PMSL. Was that the social Scottish? Says Rab. It might well be. They might just be checking up on what I'm doing on a Sunday night between 9 and 10. There you are. Some of you might have dubbed us in. <laughs> Gordon Drysdale, Dinky Doo. Lovely to have you. Fantastic stuff. Now, Ken Dodd was an absolute legend, and I'm so sorry, but bless him. I say requiem scat in patche Ken because a uh, lovely, lovely man. And I love the way he went on till he was 90. And I love the way he kept people in at his shows till one o'clock in the morning and things like that. They started at 7.30 in the evening and he was still making them laugh at one o'clock in the morning. How amazing is that? Skegness, Skeggy, Stephen, thank you. I knew somebody would help me out. It was Skegness. And I drove over to Skegness, and there's a lovely big poster of Ken Dodd saying that he was on at Skegness. So there are you two diddy men, did he pay, did he help, says Tony K. Yes, he used to do that. He used to announce that he was a, a field accountant. Uh, Ken was more than a comedian. And I'm correct, was he not number two to the Beatles with tears or happiness? Yes, I think it was happiness, actually. And those tears for seven years. There we are. I might do a stage show myself now that Ken's gone. Now that Ken Dodd's gone and Terry Wogan's gone, I think it's time for Scotty McClue to uh, get his act together, so to speak. So there you are. Scotty, oh, Frank Carson's. Okay, the comedians seem to be fascinating. Frank Carson, yes. I'm still not away, Ian. I don't know if Frank's still with. He was another cracker. The way I tell him, you know. Uh, Scotty, is it time the TV license went? Says Alan Kidden. Uh, bonjour from Bonnie Montrose, Scotty, says Robert McHardy. Bonjour, Robert, thank you so much. I got your lovely message and dinky do. I see. Um, now, uh, the time for the TV license. Now, this is interesting. This is our public service broadcaster that takes, what's the latest one? Is it £175 a year or something like that off of all of us? Um, and says that you have to pay it and what have you. I mean, I'd love a business like that when people just had to keep giving me money. But are they using the money well and wisely? I was very concerned about the BBC at the time of the Iraq war because I felt that they'd caved in any independence that they had uh, to number 10. But then, of course, when you look at it, the Board of Governors are appointed by the Queen on the advice of the Prime Minister. Well, they're not called the Governors now, of course. Uh, they've got a new name for them. But nevertheless, in, uh, Governors in all but name. Very, very important. Embassy Theatre Skegness, to Steve Burrows. Was that right? Was that where he was on? He was on at the Embassy. Tremendous. I laughed when Doddy said, you're not safe. Uh, you won't get away. And I'll come and shout jokes through your letterbox. <laughs> 
It was wonderful. He was just very, very funny. But watch that raw variety performance one when he comes on in the in the big orange cloak. <laughs> Scotty, are you on every night? So Thomas out. No, Thomas. Just a Sunday night, nine o'clock until ten o'clock. We don't want to spoil the nation, and we also don't want to give them too much of a good thing. So there we are. We also don't want to get them fed up with Scotty McClue. Very important. But I'm in discussions with very, very powerful people. So who knows? There may be a return to the radio in the offing. And then you can all get in touch with me by telephone. And we can see what's what. We can chew the fat, as they say. Right, time for another share. Come on, we're late with the last one. Share, 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 share. Everybody, share this program with all your groups, with all your followers. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClue saying Dinky Doo live on Facebook just for you. Facebook Live. Scotty, what Mr. Salmon to do? Uh, the Tories and the press are accusing him of all sorts. Free speech is alive and well. You should do a Scotland stage show. Go to the Free Scholar Shields, Aberdeen, Inverness, Glasgow, Edinburgh, indeed, Stirling, etc. Yes, and also remember, Scotty, people thought I'd gone from the radio, but when I went down south, I was on in London, I was on in Nottingham, I was on in Birmingham, I was on in Newcastle. I was on in the northeast. Uh, well, that's Newcastle, of course. But uh, and and I was on all these things. I was on in the northwest, in Manchester and Preston and Liverpool. Huge, huge stuff. So there we are. Jim Bowen's gone as well. Yes, I met uh, Jim Bowen as well. I remember going to a dinner and Jim was speaking. Very, very funny man. Very funny speaker, actually. Great stuff. And of course, um, if I remember rightly. He worked on Radio Lancashire, BBC Radio Lancashire. Lovely man. Joseph says, young Columba begin. So there you are. I was watching Columbo today. Uh, it's, you could become a Columbo addict. Does anybody hear a Columbo addict? Does anybody um, sort of start to have a wee swatch when Columbo comes on? And then you actually watch him. So there we are. My Sunday evening as a kid was the Muppets Highway, Harry Seacombe, and then Bullseye, says Stephen. And then hopefully Scotty McClue on Red Rose Radio at 10 o'clock. Harry Nolis, here's one for you, Scotty. Should vaccines be made compulsory by the government in terms of public health? Well, Harry, it depends what the vaccine is for, and it also depends what is in it. Because usually with vaccines, as far as I understand it, although I don't know a tremendous amount about immunology and about uh, incubation periods etc for viruses or viri but uh, what i will say is that sometimes a little dose of it can either cure you or kill you so that's the thing so i'm not too sure about compulsory vaccines scotty ever thought of hosting question time i think you'd sort them out says Alan Cadden. Yes, I don't know if the BBC would do that, but I think if Mr. Dimbleby were to have a holiday and they said, Scotty, would you come and host Question Time? No problem. I also think they should try me out on Question Time and say tonight, Question Time is from Edinburgh or from Glasgow. And on the panel tonight are Nicola Sturgeon, the First Minister for Scotland, the uh, Secretary of State for Scotland, Scotty McClure, broadcaster blah blah there you are you see i watch all the columbus on sunday scotty now elsa and anyway love colombo says neil gormley uh, excuse me sir if 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 i if i could just ask you if i could ask you one more thing sir so there you go yes jim what's a saturday night show uh till seven scotty with jim bones very sad demise who would you think he'd like to be the host of the show channel five I'm thinking about redoing, says Kieran Fox. There we are. Shall I get myself in for Bully? Uh, Finlay Patterson, uh, the Bully as in Bullseye, by the way, for you all. Start writing in. Uh, Scotty used to play darts with Jim Bone till its head got blunt. <laughs> Neil, very, very good. You're a funny man. Uh, just just one more thing, Stephen. Yeah, sir, sir, if I can just ask you one more thing. You said you weren't there, sir, but it was one of your cigarettes uh, dancing the ash. 
<laughs> so there we go. Um, Jacqueline Quick, uh, what's your opinion on the uh, their art on uh, on on the art? What's your opinion on the art on? Yes, haven't really got that one, Harry. So there we are, not terribly clear. If you've just joined us, folks, welcome, welcome, welcome. You're watching Scotty McClure. We are, of course, live on the big one, Facebook Live. The one everyone's watching, the one everyone's talking about. This is the new television. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. Tell everyone about Scotty McClure. Share it the new, of course, with all your groups, all your followers in India, Africa, Canada, America, New Australia, New Zealand, Russia, China, Japan, the Arctic, the Antarctic, North America, South America, down to the Tierra del Fuego. You could all be watching Scotty McClure right now. And of course, even when we go off air, Start sharing the video big time, all right? And several thousand will have watched. My word, it's Sunday. Working these awful shifts sure mess things up. I was thinking, ah, Scotty's on Friday too. But no, it's Sunday, says Douglas McPherson. Well, of course, the great attraction of the weekend, Douglas, is that Scotty McClure is on at 9 o'clock sharp on a Sunday evening. Dinky do. I do beg your pardon, this keyboard... What's your opinion on the right honourable uh, Philip Hammond, Chancellor of the Exchequer? Well, Harry, I don't give personal opinions out on the show of what I think of individual politicians. I'm more interested in the actual job that they are doing and how well they are doing it. So that would be my answer to you there. Erica Meyer, I've told all my friends to watch, Scotty. Erica's out in Australia. Is that right, Erica? Uh, hearing you loud and clear from the potted heat islands in the North Atlantic. Uh, Note honourable about the Tories, says Stephen. Well, you know, I used to have a lot of time for the Tories. Old Alec Douglas Hume, he wasn't the finest Prime Minister, but he was an excellent Foreign Secretary. He knew to deal how to deal with um, Mr. Khrushchev in Russia and uh, John F. Kennedy in America. Very exciting times. Old Harold Macmillan, a Scot from Macmillan Publishing. Robert Boothby, another Scot. So there you are. A tremendous number of Scots about. Very, very interesting. Um, Ari Butler, terrific guy. Uh, all that sort of thing. So there we are. Uh, Scotty, you on the swallow tonight? A whip, Sir Rab. No, whip, Rab. Whip, I say. Uh, yes, I am, Scotty. How's your pet fox? The pet fox is wonderful. He follows me with the dog 15 feet away. And then he comes up and he goes, you stay here, I can smell you. I'm not saying that I smell, but he goes, I can smell you. And he hangs around outside and then you pop out and see how he is. Scotty, who was the first DG that you listened to? And don't say, Lord Ha, -ha. <coughs> the first Director General of the BBC was Lord Reith. John Reith himself, who actually started as the General Manager of the British Broadcasting Company. He lived in Linder Street in Glasgow. His father was a free church minister, Dr. George Reith. And Reith was brought up. He went to Glasgow Academy, brought up in Glasgow. And he was at school with James Bridie, the playwright, O.H. Maver, Dr. O.H. Maver. Um, and that sort of stuff, whose son just died not very long ago there. Tremendous stuff. Uh, wonderful Ronald Maver. Bingo, as his father used to call him. Wonderful Glasgow characters. George MacLeod of Funerary that rebuilt Iona. He stayed round the corner in Park Circus. His family, the MacLeods. Um, a long line of very influ influential churchmen going right way back. The Reverend Dr. George Field and MacLeod, Minister of Govan Old Parish at one point, St. Cuthbert's in Edinburgh. And they did a tremendous job and rebuilt the Iona community. A great pacifist. So there you are. Wonderful stuff. Uh, but uh, Lord Reith was the first director general of the BBC. That's when he incorporated it to become uh, the British Broadcasting Corporation. He started in 1922 with four employees, himself as general manager. He had a secretary that was a program director and an engineer, four of them. Amazing, because the government had realised the power of the airwaves and thought, we need to get our hands on this before ordinary people do. Aha! Uh -huh. uh, Scotty for Minister of Culture and Broadcasting, says Stephen Wearmouth. Stephen, a job I could probably do standing on 
my head because i would listen 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 to my civil servants and i would listen 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 to the people that's what it's all about did you have snow this morning boss says murray ramage we did murray yes an absolute powdering of snow not too bad but very very cold and little flurries all day share 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 guys i really enjoy your broadcast scotty says kieran fox thank you kieran i believe in it i think it's very important to do it and i know that the bosses of all the big radio and television stations watch it as well so there you are so it's very interesting a lot of the people like your good self are very very influential because they say let's watch mcclue and hear what he's saying see what's going on beneath the bonnet very very important uh, erica in australia we've had some bad bushfires in new south wales and victoria some houses lost but no lives lost says erica i'm very pleased to hear no lives were lost no fatalities erica but i'm so sorry that you've had the bushfires and i do hope they weren't uh, started intentionally by irresponsible idiots so there we are um wadge is, is watching wadge lovely to have you with us dinky do and uh, dinky do scotty says wadge excellent stuff marconi and tesla uh, were the first dgs scotty no no not at all marconi very interesting not very long before the bbc started marconi was around and somebody paid me a wonderful compliment and said that i had done um so much for radio uh, since the days of marconi how interesting because i'm content you see i'm regarded as high value content excellent stuff because everybody wants to listen scotty where do you think the snp went wrong in reference to the 21 seats lost at the 2017 general election i don't think they did go wrong although it's difficult to say that they lost 21 seats but i think you've got to hold your nerve a lot of that was farmers panicking farmers who used to vote conservative and panicking that the um farming subsidies weren't coming through quick enough so uh, one of them actually said oh I, the snp have had their wings clipped but that was a silly silly short-sighted thing to do you've got to hold your nerve if you really want politics to work and you've got to hand it alex salmon did exactly the right thing it was desperately sad to see him go but he thought right i'm off if you don't want it but in actual fact that was just a lot of dirty tricks being played by the opposite campaign in actual fact i would suspect regardless of the outcome that scotland should be independent right now it should certainly be clear of the mess that's being made of British politics at the moment. Uh, so they are, Scotland needs to be clear of that because they have a different agenda, right? They have a very honest agenda, Scotland, and they're very much for the people. And that's very, very important. Um, you know, they're not just for a party, they're for the people. And you look at where the SNP has come from. I mean, the SNP were a minority party when I was a young person. And then you had Winnie Ewing at Hamilton. And then people realized it is unfortunate the term nationalist in a way because they are the antithesis of nationalists they want a scottish administration but they're very much for the people so that's the point of view i'm not uh, you know a party member i'm not an snp member or anything like that but i do believe that scotland should be governing itself because the scots the british empire and this is no slight on the scots the british empire was so successful because it was run by scots and scots don't buy into a class system the same way as they did in england they wouldn't have it so a scot somebody would say to an english administrator now remember don't even look at the general when he comes in right don't look at the general you don't look at him because he's of a different class to you he's one up all that stuff whereas the scots would say look mush if you're asking me for a straight answer here that won't work and here's why so the scots did the english a tremendous service by running their empire for them it was actually the scottish empire 
So there we are. Uh, postal votes on indie ref rigs as Mark Dow. Well, I don't know that for a fact, Mark, so I couldn't comment on that. Uh, so there we are. Scotty, hope you go to Holyrood next Friday for Hands Around the Parliament Hoop. Uh, if you got offered a show on RT, would you accept it, says David Gallagher. I don't know, David. That's a very, very interesting one. So there you are. I was watching Alex Salmond talking about the freedom that he has on RT, the fact that his editorial was not in any way interfered with. And also, if you think about it, the reason that established broadcasters don't particularly like somebody as a newcomer to the market is it's a different point of view. And if a station was putting out propaganda and another station was negating that propaganda, it's bound to have an effect on weakening the propaganda. And administrations don't want their propaganda weakened on both sides. So that's kind of how it works. I'm not saying Ike or Ohe, no names, no pack drill, but I am explaining to you how the game works. So there you are. Um, so if I got offered a show on RT, would I accept it? I suppose anything regarding what would the terms be and what would the integrity be? So that's it, because Scotty McClue is always interested on the side of integrity, right? Uh, hi, Scotty, dinky-doo, loving the show, Scotty, says Chris Kelly. Nivagsi Tech, lovely to have you with us. I like your tie, Scotty. It suits you, says Erica. My tie? I am a Gemini monkey, Erica. I, am, I was born in the year of the monkey, the Chinese year of the monkey, and this tie, uh, you'll see, is little monkeys all holding each other's tail and of course you know the story why the monkey is the king of the jungle and not the lion i'll maybe tell you another time i think we're tight for time tonight hey, scotty did you know donald dewar gave away the scottish maritime borders and secret to get a devolved parliament i think this needs to be corrected and his statue taken down so there we are oh good old donald um i don't know he worked extremely hard for scottish politics and, uh, you know, he was the father of the Scottish Parliament. I don't know that I'd want to take his statue down, although it has been vandalised a few times. I think his glasses got broken and they had to put him up high. So there you are. And I mean, if you were to take Donald Dewar down, would you put a statue of Scotty McClure up in uh, Buchanan Street? So there you are in Glasgow. But um, Donald Dewar, no, I do think we need to ensure that the maritime borders are corrected because these are Scottish waters. But that would come with, uh, with independence. Uh, you think Labour keep raising questions at First Minister's questions that are out with the responsibility of the Scottish government? Well, Labour are, um, you know, not terribly pivotal in Scottish politics, if you look at what happened, because they didn't back independence, they effectively betrayed the Scottish people and betrayed their Scottish roots, because the SNP was founded by the chairman of the Labour Party. So there you are, uh, Robert Bontin, uh, Cunningham Graham, R.B. Cunningham Graham, and the Duke of Montrose, and all these early powerful people in Scottish politics founded the SNP. I used to respect you, says Rob Whiteley. What do you mean you used to respect me? What are you on about, Rob? Qualify that. Uh, there is a new tried and tested voting system. Blockchain cannot be rigged, says Eddie Doby Sr. I am very pleased to hear it, Eddie Doby Sr. There we are. Iona Brands watching with a lovely name. Uh, oops, I mean Rooster, says Stephen Wearmouth. Born in the year of the monkey, that explains things, says Ian Walker. Well, we're very, very brilliant. Anybody born in the year of the monkey usually has extra brilliance about them. Uh, Chinese New Year, every 12 years. Scotty, your thoughts on the World Cup? Is anyone UK associated safe now, says Kieran Fox. Yes, I should think so, Kieran. Uh, there's no point in getting paranoid. Scotty, I would put your picture on my front door just to keep the debt letters away. Says Rab. Thank you, Rab. That's very kind of you. There we are. Everybody, I'm sure, has respect for Scotty McClue. Uh, I'm asking about how your pies are, and you've not responded, says Rob. Ah, 
That's better. I wondered what you were on about there. My pies are absolutely beautiful. My mince pies. There you are. Uh, play the Dark Island Scotty on your noise box. Uh, yes, I might do that. I feel left out, says Rob Whiteley. Rob Whiteley, everybody is included in the Scotty McClue show. This is the most inclusive club in the world. And you should all join the Scotty McClue Facebook fan group. Get yourselves on to that. Labour ruined the country confidence and the Tories are burying it, says Alistair Kings. Oh, there you are. I'm not terribly impressed with a lot of what I'm seeing in politics at the moment. Mm. Oh, that's lovely. Apart from in Scottish politics, I'm very, very impressed with the way Scotland is being run at the moment. Thanks, Scotty, says Rob. You're a top man. You're a top man, Rob Whiteley. You will never, ever be neglected. Nobody gets neglected on the Scotty McClure show. Everybody is welcome. All comers. Tell ten to tell ten to tell ten to tell ten. There we are. I would like to see this program almost just as it is, with a little bit of theme music, etc., etc., on national television on a Friday night for, say, half an hour, or a Saturday night for half an hour, and we get the opinion of the people. You phone me, and I take your call in the studio, and I tell you exactly what I think of you. Uh, so there we are. Can we have a recipe for summer McClue's pies? Yes, with a little bit of ice. Iced pie. You couldn't beat that. <coughs> Who wanted the Dark Island? I don't know if I can play. I've never ever practiced the Dark Island, and of course, I'm no great shakes on the squeeze box, as you all well know. But we'll see. <laughs> present for you. Uh, that'll sort you out. What's your opinion on the deep fried Mars bar? I've never actually tried one, Harry. Do they exist? I would ask you first. Can we have another share, please? Share, 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 share. Scotty McClure is live just for you on Facebook Live, the world's top broadcast platform. And it's happening as we speak. We are at the mercy of the algorithm, but who knows, we should be getting the bag off the head and we should appear to most of you throughout the week in your news feed. As soon as you see anything with Scotty McClue on it, share, 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 and tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. Type, 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 tap, 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 tap. I'm watching Scotty McClue right now. Humming, says Gordon Sterling. Put your shoes back on. You muddled it. Dark Island of disaster. Stick to humming. Not at all, Gordon. I'll tell you now, I complimented your pipe playing when you did a 2-4. So there we are. There we go. Never muddled a chin in my life. Yes, they exist, to be quite frank with you. They taste like a chocolate brownie. I think it certainly contributed towards Scotland's health standards. Sold very cheap and high attraction for school children. Says Harry, is that right? Not the best thing I say. More hearts, guys. Tap, 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 de tap, tap, de tap, de tap. Let's have a load of hearts as we speak. Come on, hearts on the screen now, please. Thank you. Tap, 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 de tap, tap, de tap, de tap. There we go. That's the stuff. Thank you. Uh, what about starting your own radio station, says David Gallagher. Well, it's a thought. Well done, Scotty, says Thomas Hamilton with the squeeze box. Thank you, Thomas. Very much appreciated. Um, yes, it's a thought, but uh, the only thing is I did actually um, have a share in a radio station, but uh, the management side of things is a little bit tricky, shall we say. So there you are, a little bit unreliable. But um, I did also do internet stuff, very, very important as well. But nowadays, I think we could certainly work away on Facebook Live and um, get everything increasing. Rob Whiteley sends a heart. Thank you. I saw your picture, Scotty. Uh, yes, well, just Ian Walker. I think we might ban Ian Walker because he's not actually terribly funny. I'll delete his comment and... Uh, We'll, uh, we'll put him on hold. We might ban him. I'll maybe put it out to the globe to see if you think Ian Walker should be banned for poor quality humour. 
Uh, never mind the nerve agents. Give them a good dose of the squeeze box. I wish I could play it, says Stephen Wainwright. Oh, yes, we can manage something. So there we are. I mean, Gordon Sterling, you said you muttered it. I'll hand you my button key melodion, and at the drop of a hat, with no practice, you play the Dark Island, and we'll see how you go. All right? So there you are. Uh, the live page uh, here's better than the radio for a lot. A lot better to see who you're chatting to, says Alistair. You know, Alistair, as you know, I'm no oil painting. I don't think that needs any explanation. But having said that, that's what I look like. And if anybody's got a problem with Scotty McClure, that's their problem. And I think that people do appreciate uh, actually having a visual contact as well. Uh, what a nerve you have calling that the Dark Island, says Gordon Sterling. You are a Dark Island, Gordon. I'll tell you that for nothing. You can he ban humour, Scotty. Yes, but it's pretty poor humour from you in a lot of the time. Uh, it's not well thought out. You need to do some more thinking out. Uh, what would you make your pies would be like? Share a recipe on how you make them, says Erica Meyer. Erica, I could never give away a trade secret live on a global broadcast. My goodness me, you're watching in Australia. And uh, and I am telling you. Um, William O'Neill, dinky-do. Alan Brown says, what was the old joke about how do you terrorise a Scotsman? You nail his foot to the floor and play him a Jimmy Shan record. <laughs> nail his foot to the floor. <sighs> and he can't beat time, you see. Uh, neither am I finding it better, says Alistair. Uh, ban, ban, ban sanctions. All this has got to stop, Scotty. Uh, so there we are. Excellent stuff. According to my dear mother, bless her, the only thing I can play is the fool. <coughs> now that is wonderful, Stephen. Because that is not an easy thing to play. And I should know. So there you are. Somebody used to say it's better to keep your mouth shut and be thought a fool than to open it and prove it. And I was talking to somebody recently and they said, well, yes, you, you and my husband would have got on. He didn't suffer fools gladly. I said, in my case, would he be willing to negotiate? Uh, so they are a conversation. Uh, I might like to do a vid of me on the fiddle and you and the squeeze, says Kieran. Why not? Scotty, on tomorrow night, says Thomas. No, no, no. We're not, uh, we're not on tomorrow, unfortunately. Betty's Pie Shop and Parkhead, says Ian. So there we are. Right, that's you back in the good books, Ian. I could play the Muthy and the pipes, says Alistair King. Well, Gordon, who was very critical on my dark island there, he plays the pipes excellently, superbly well. I thought he was a pipe major because I saw him doing a swing when it came to the last bar or two. Very interesting. And of course, as you know, if it's your hand, you'll hear the double 40. Boom, 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 boom. And you're about to stop playing. There you are. I've given you a trade secret there. McClure Fair's Fair, Dark Island is a challenge for some of us, with some beautiful tuckums for the piper to execute. Yes, there you are gone, but I will hand you in public any time my button key melodion and ask you to play the Dark Island and see how you go. And then I will hopefully be gentlemanly enough not to say, Oh, you murdered it! You murdered it! So there we are. Uh, what days are you doing, Scotty? says Thomas. Well, we haven't worked that out yet, Thomas. A Glasgow woman goes to the dentist and settles down in the chair. Comfy as the dentist. Govern, she replies. Where do you comfy? Do you get it? I went to the dentist one time. He said, Scotty, your teeth are lovely. Unfortunately, your gums will have to come out. So there we are. Uh, Camus Alton is watching Dinky Doo. Uh, Thomas says, every Sunday night, 9 till 10. Uh, you're back in my good books, Scotty, for the Dark Islands. Thank you very much, Ian. Not a problem. Oh, my goodness, I've realised it's out of time. Susan Copeland Power, whose birthday is today. Happy birthday, Susan, and dinky do. We have to dash, guys. Dark Island is a wonderful tune. Not an easy one to master, says Alistair King. So there we are. No, but I could probably, I could probably manage it. He didn't like when I put boards in. I think that was the whole thing. Anyway, we're right out of time, guys. Have a fabulous week. Thank you for watching tonight. It has been a tremendous show. One to watch again on your catch-up. It'll be being uploaded, of course, to YouTube, so you'll be able to catch up there as well and share it throughout the week right up until 10 o'clock 
next Sunday night. This is show number 79 for those of you who are counting. How tremendous that is. Dinky doo, catch you later. Uh, so there we are. Farage is on the radio 24 7, but there's only an hour of McClue. Uh, he's not on 24 7, I don't think. Thanks, Scotty, says Susan. Looking forward to next week, Scotty, says Harry. And it is lights out. Are you ready for the song? One song coming up now. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody, of winter, zane, au revoir, and a cheery o. Have a gorgeous week. Look after your lovely selves, and we'll all be together, God willing, weather permitting, at 10 o'clock sharp next Sunday night. Until then, this is Scotty McClure, on behalf of a grateful globe, saying dinky-doo to every single one of you. Ta-da, lads! Dinky-doo! <laughs>